Hi, welcome back to Vlogmas. Today we are gonna do some baking. I'm so excited. We're gonna make chocolate chip cookies with a very special secret ingredient. And we're going to make some almond crescent cookies that are my favorite cookies of life. I love these, it's like my signature cookie. And we're gonna make some good old fashioned sugar cookies just like straight off the back of the packaging from the Hershey's Kisses, but they are like a holiday staple for me. So I have my ingredients all gathered. I am so ready to just have a relaxing baking day. And I am gearing up. When I bake for other people, I do the same precautions they do at restaurants around here. So just trying to keep my loved ones safe and comfortable and make sure everybody can enjoy these delicious cookies. Diving right in on the almond cookies, which are, like I said, my absolute favorite. The magic ingredient in these is almond paste. And if you've never used it before, it is magical to bake with. Like it just makes everything taste incredible. So good. It is secret ingredient level good. And this brand that I got, I really liked. It was really easy to work with. So I'll try to link that. And these cookies actually have like every form of almond in them. I've made them with you before, but it's almond paste, almond flour, almond extract, and almond slices, and some sugar. <laughs> but that's what's so delicious about them. They're very simple. They're just naturally a gluten-free cookie. If you have anyone that you want to bake for that's gluten-free, and um, they are just a real treat. They get like rave reviews, so I love to make these. Just separating out some egg whites to go in this recipe. I made three batches of this recipe, so it was a lot to manage at one time. Um, blending it is always a challenge because that almond paste, sometimes it's like cement. It's like trying to blend just gravel. But as you add the egg whites, that helps kind of moisten everything up. It makes it a little easier to work with. And eventually you will wind up with actual cookie dough, this like gorgeous texture, so yummy and squishy. <laughs> I just love the texture of these cookies. Time for the final almond ingredient. And all you have to do is form the dough into balls and then you roll it amongst the almond slices into sort of a log shape that you can then shape and bend into a crescent just with your fingers. And that's what gives them the famous shape that makes them almond crescent cookies. And I love to stick as many almond slices as I can. If there's any extra little corner of dough, I will glue an almond slice onto it because that's what gives these cookies the amazing crunchy exterior. And then they have this just gooey, soft, soft center because of the almond paste and this, the texture is very light on these cookies. So it's the perfect combination between that gooey, melty center and then the crunchy, crispy almond slices on the outside. And it's honestly kind of therapeutic. I love rolling these into the almond slices and making the little shapes. I have fond, fond memories of eating these cookies with my mom when I was little. We would always get them at the farmer's market, so they're special. And I'm putting the first batch in the oven. All day today while I was baking, I was just rotating batches of cookies one at a time on my one trusty magical baking pan. And using this cute timer, I got it Daiso. I just love strawberry shaped things so much. So while those are baking, I'm making my second and third batches of these cookies. And just a little side note here, I wanted to mention if anyone ever bakes for you or cooks for you, do not forget to tell them how delicious it is. We have one friend who always goes out of his way to compliment these cookies. I always bring them like to the group gathering and he just is so sweet about these, like how much he loves these cookies. So as a result, he gets his own special bag of cookies. Like I bring some for the party and some for him to take home to his family <laughs> because it just means so much when you're the baker and you're you know like kind of nervous to see if people like what you made and what their reaction is. And sometimes people forget to even like react. So it means the world when someone like has an over the top reaction and he gets free cookies for life as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> But these are done. They're just lightly, lightly golden, and that's what you want. You don't want to overcook these cookies at all. So moving on to the chocolate chip cookies, there are two really special things about this recipe. The first special thing is that it should be made with kamut flour. It has such an incredible flavor. It is so great to bake with, bread, desserts, everything. But I was sadly out of it, so I just used this recipe as it is, but I substituted normal baking flour. 
And the other special ingredient is salt, but not just any salt. This is French sea salt. It's fleur de sel. It is so magical to bake with. It adds such an incredible flavor. And I'm adding a generous pinch to the top of each cookie. And I'm also kind of tapping it into the dough because these are gonna be shipped. I don't want all of that precious salt to be falling off all over the place. And it really adds the perfect combination of salty and sweet and makes these cookies so crave worthy. So as you can see, they are coming out of the oven. The recipe actually says to take these out when they are quote, medium rare, which I thought was so funny to use that to describe cookies, but it's true. You just really don't wanna overcook any cookies. That's what makes them hard. And if you want them to have that soft, chewy center, don't be scared to take them out a little bit medium rare. They will firm up as they cool and that gives them that texture. And you can see those precious grains of salt on top. It is such a good combination. So now we're moving on to the true classics, sugar cookies. I am rolling them in this pink sugar crystals, which definitely makes them look gorgeous and adorable because they're pink. You can also use red or green for Christmas or any color you want but it just adds that crunchy exterior again. We're all about like the contrasting textures and flavors. That's what makes cookies or any baked goods so memorable and so crave worthy. And it's really simple. You just, you know, form the sugar cookie dough and then roll it into a ball and then roll it in the sugar to bake. And you don't have the kisses until afterwards. But while the first batch was in the oven, I did go ahead and unwrap several kisses so they would be ready to go. You don't want to be fussing with all that while the cookies are cooling. It's like a perfect little window to put these on top. And these are sugar cookie flavored Hershey's Kisses, by the way. So they're like white chocolate with little crunchy sugar cookie bits inside. They are so good. And again, they add all those textures and make the perfect combination, which is what we're all about for making a memorable, delicious holiday cookie. So these just came out of the oven. They're so puffy and crispy on the outside and cute because they're pink. They're just adorable cookies. And after exactly two minutes, you can add the kisses. You don't want to do it too soon or else the kisses might melt. And you don't want to do it too late or else the cookies will be too hardened to incorporate the kiss. So it's like that perfect little window. And these are one of my absolute favorites ever since childhood. So they are a must. And while I'm kind of rotating through, I'm going to wash these containers. These are so cute. I got them at the Dollar Tree and I thought they would be really cute for delivering cookies in. So I'm just washing and sanitizing and taking the stickers off of all of these. So they'll be thoroughly dried and ready for cookies later today. But in the meantime, I did have one baking fail today. I didn't realize my oven has an auto shut off. So at some point for the last batch, it shut off and the oven was basically cold and the cookie dough just came out so flat and totally, total fail. But that's okay because we did have over a hundred, if I counted correctly, successful, beautiful cookies. I was so proud of these, so excited. They tasted delicious and I couldn't wait to give them away. I was packaging several up for friends and also putting some in the freezer so I'll have them on hand all winter. I can pull them out for parties or if people come over, last minute gifts, things like that. And I had these presents all wrapped and ready to go. This gorgeous wrapping paper is from Target, by the way. Absolutely love it. And I just packaged everything up. I wrapped the cookies in pairs in saran wrap back to back. So hopefully they'll be cushioned enough during travel. Everything was bundled as safely as I possibly could. And then I raced to the post office right before it closed. I wanted to make sure these cookies got in the mail while they were still as fresh as possible. So it just felt like an epic holiday moment, like racing out the door and getting these sent off. <sighs> okay, we made it through such an epic baking day over, I think if I count right, over a hundred cookies were made here today. And then it turned into a mad dash at the end to race to the post office, get everything packaged up. I wanted to mail out several batches of those cookies and then like freeze the rest. So we did it, we made it before the, we were like the last people in the post office. So that is a Christmas victory. And I'm so excited that I got to vlog it and hang out with you guys all day. It made it extra fun and special for me and I hope it inspired you to find some like baking cozy goodness or whatever your hobbies are for this special time of year. And I just wanted to apologize that I'm not eating a cookie with you now because I hate watching baking videos where they don't try what they made at the end. It's like, what did we just do all this work for? But I am now in the car and to be honest, I had a couple cookies while I was baking so I'm kind of sugared out for the day. 
and I owe you a cookie sample. So we will do that tomorrow. Tune back in and I'm very sorry to leave you hanging, but they did all turn out delicious. My husband tried them and loved them too. And I highly vouch for all of those recipes. So definitely recommend. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining for another day of Vlogmas. And I owe you an apology because day eight kind of got lost in the ether. <laughs> like I've already explained this week got very crazy, sort of a bumpy start to the beginning part of Vlogmas, but we are here, we're going strong. Thank you for baking with me all day. I feel like that was a must and I will be back tomorrow with more. So hit subscribe if you wanna join us for the rest of this fun romp through the holidays and I will see you then, bye.